How's it going? So in this tutorial, we are gonna be making this animation right here. We're first gonna be taking a black and white image and we're gonna be using that as the way to create the text in our animation. First, we're gonna take a grid and duplicate points within that grid, then use that image as the way to delete the points when they are in the space of the text. After that, we'll do some simple displacement to animate all of those points and use that same displacement to provide color within those points. Then we just need some simple lighting animate the movement with a loop, and we'll be done. If you wanna learn more about particle systems and how to make them look cooler, light them, animate them, a lot of different ways to control your particle systems within geometry nodes, I just launched an entire series on my Patreon dedicated to that theme. So if you want to learn more about that, check out my Patreon in the description along with all the other content that I have on there, and you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, Let's get into this tutorial. All right, we are gonna be using this image as the mask in our animation. If you don't have your own black and white image, you can quite literally use any black and white image you want. Um, on Patreon right now, you can actually grab the attachment for free. You don't need a Patreon account. I'll link in the description, just download the attachment and you can get this, or again, use any black and white image as your mask and it does not need to be this aspect ratio. So just have some type of mask image that you want to use as the shape within your particle system. Now let's go ahead here in Blender. I'm gonna open up a brand new window, go ahead and get a plane. And up here, we're gonna get a geometry nodes editor and click new. So first, let's go ahead and get a cube. So we'll go ahead, C-U-B-E, cube, plug him here, and let's go ahead and stretch him to be, uh, to fill the space that we want to have our text occupy, something around these lines. It really does not need to be exact, and just about how thick you want those particles to be as well, something like this. Now what we can do is convert this thing to a volume. So mesh to volume, just like that, and then you can bring up that density, and you can bring up that voxel amount, uh, which is really isn't that important, and then you can bring up that density to make sure that the volume is the same size as our cube. Now what we can do is do a distribute points in volume. So distribute points in volume node, and then you could start to bring up that density pretty quick, and now we have a field of randomly placed uh, particles. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna hit Shift A and get a plane, and I just want this plane uh, to be the floor that is going to, we can see uh, through the text. And so we can just bring that grid right at the very bottom of the particles. So if you go here to Cycles, you will be able to see particles and a floor, and it's cool and it's great. And you can actually hit this drop down up here and click Scene World, Scene Lights and you don't have to add lighting right now to be able to kind of see this and appreciate it. Now that we've created our particles, let's go ahead and use our image to delete the particles that are gonna take up the space of the text. So what we're gonna do is get a delete geometry node, make sure it says points, but that's default, so it should say it. We're gonna get a image texture, plug this right here into selection, and go here and open up your image. So now if you see some weird things happening, just know that means uh, your image is working. You can see it kind of getting tile, uh, tiled all over here. So right over here, go from repeat to clip, and then we're going to get a couple nodes. You can kind of see it happening right there. Um, so that's where my image is existing. It's too small. It's just not what we want. So what I'm going to do is to get a position node, and what we're going to create is a texture coordinate. Um, they, we don't have a texture coordinate uh, in the same exact way that we do in, um, in the shading workspace, so we can build it though. So position just is important to know, hey, there's space here. So we're gonna get in a vector math node. He is gonna represent position, so we'll plug him there, just the add, and then we're gonna go ahead and get in, uh, duplicate him, switch him over to multiply. He is going to represent the, the scale function in a texture coordinate, and you can plug it there. So now bring your multiply back to one. In fact, if you just bring it up like that, you will start to see it happening. And because this is like a scale, it also means you can stretch and squash. Now this is your position. So you can bring and center out this thing. Of course, right now, we just need to actually scale it up. Um, so it will start to stretch around uh, in a way that you don't want as you're playing around with it. So it is just going to, uh, it's gonna be a matter of just massaging this image until it takes the form 
however you want it to. So something like this. There are some more sort of intricate ways to actually get it to perfectly map. Um, I'm not really, I'm not going to be that exact about it. So now we have an image that deletes objects. We can see, look at that, it works. Now, the next thing I want to do is use displacement to animate all these particles. And that's where hierarchy is going to be very important. If we add our displacement here, which let's just go ahead and I'm going to show you what will happen. If I do this and then I add my noise texture to my set position node and I click normalize and I add color, whoop, where'd our text go, right? That's because the action is happening after the formation of the text. We need to displace our particles before the formation of the text, before the function of the deleting. And so what we need to do, instead of putting set position after, put it before. And that is going to be the only thing we need to do. So just go ahead, get a set position node, go and get in a noise texture. And we're going to plug color right into offset. And notice, bring that detail down, bring that scale up. No matter what we do, and switch this over to 4D, that text is staying put, and that is exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up the scale of my uh, box just because I know um, it's going to be moving around quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead here to the top. I'm going to hit Shift A, get a camera, Control Alt Zero, and snap it to view. And I want my text to be like this. So now I know, hey, the text needs to be centered out a little bit. So we'll go back to our mapping nodes and say, hey, stay in the middle. All right, next is the scale of our points. They're kind of big. Um, particle systems, at least ones like this, they tend to look better at higher volumes and smaller scales. This is just kind of globby and ugly. And so what we can do is get a set point radius. And then you can start to bring that down to me, point zero two. There we go. Very small, which means we just need to bring up the density of our displacement. Now, here's one thing that I want to change. Notice the uh, displacement is going to be on X, Y, and the Z in terms of our uh, set position. I don't want that. I only want the displacement to happen this way. I don't want it to happen that way. I want it to be perfectly flat. So what we can do here on the noise texture, make sure you are unchecking normalize. And then what we need to do is get a vector math node, set that to a multiply. And what that's going to let us do is actually not only play with the strength of the displacement that we're giving it, which will automatically make it really more wiggly and more interesting and just a little bit more fun to look at, but also is going to say, hey, don't, don't displace it that way. Keep it on the flat because that's going to help with the effect uh, that we're going for and also just lets us play with it on the X and the Y and then when we animate it, it will look really, really cool. So now we have this. You can play with uh, the radius of your objects if you want a little bit more. To me, it's going to be 0 0.01 at a higher density. So what are we at? 180? Let's do like 600. So that looks cool. Now it's not going to look quite as obvious until we start adding colors. So let's go ahead and start to add some shading to this. But I want this noise texture to influence the colors that we're going to see on our particles. So what we can do is right after the set point radius, get a set material node right over here. We can just go ahead and click new. He's just called 001. We'll go ahead and grab 001. And then we can get a we can hit Shift A and get a store named attribute. I'm going to say C for color. Everything's lagging a little bit, so I'm just going to bring my density down to like 300 for now. And then we can just go ahead and take this color, plug it right into value. And now we have that, and we can switch this guy over to the shader editor. I'm going to go back here to the view. Let's go ahead and grab that attribute. So we've got attribute right here. C for color, and let's plug color right into color. So now we have this. So now let's go ahead and get a color ramp and select uh, some really cool colors. So we're going to go ahead, get this a color ramp, 
And a fun little trick is I'm going to go switch this over to HSV, switch this to far, and then this color, just make it red. It's going to create this big kind of rainbow situation. And then once you have that established, you can go get a hue saturation value node and play around with values until you start to like the situation that you're in. This is cool. I think we can run with this one um, for this tutorial. This looks awesome. And then now we can just go head back to the geometry nodes editor and just see how it would look as final density. So what, 1,000? No, 600. 600 on the density. There we go. This is how it would look as a final. Now we're not quite done yet. This bottom color, I do want to go ahead and select that. So I'm just going to click on the bottom um, tier. That's geometry nodes. We'll just go over here and then say, make it kind of like that yellow that we're getting beneath. That'll kind of keep everything cohesive. You can even make it you know, like a light purple if you want, uh, just kind of keeping it in the family. You can even make it emissive. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to keep it uh, like this so it's nice and readable. Now for lighting, uh, with shots like this, you can actually go simpler, uh, and that's going to give you uh, a more interesting looking animation. So I'm going to hit the drop down, hit on, uh, hit on scene world, scene lights, and we're going to go get a light area, hit up. Let's see, we need to go uh, see the gizmos. I'm going to go here to, actually we'll just keep it flat, and then we'll bring it up. I always put my lights way too close. Then I'm gonna hit R twice and then scale the thing up pretty aggressively and then give your power of like 3000. So that's starting to look good. Um, let's bring that spread in a little bit and then you can go maybe uh, 10,000. All right, that looks, that looks pretty good. And then you can also bring your world brightness up a little bit if you want to even out those shadows or make the shadows really aggressive and make them super dark, whatever you want to do. And then here on the particle system, I'm going to go open up that window again that I sadly deleted. And I'm going to bring up my density again. So right now it's at 600. We're going to do 1,200 to make it fully nice and dense. And then let's go ahead and render this out and see how this would look as a final image. All right, so this is a final look at what it would look like rendered. One thing I think is the shadows are too long uh, for what I want it to be. So I'm gonna just go ahead and that tells me I just wanna bring up the height of my light. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, go up a little bit and then point down. I still want a little bit of that, like what I'm getting. So that looks super nice. Now what we need to do is just animate our particles uh, in a loop so that this looks really cool. So that would be the W of this noise texture. Right now it's way too dense to see that in real time. So I'm gonna do maybe a density of 50 for now so we can look at these particles move in real time. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna highlight this and hit G and move them down. And let's go ahead and get ourselves some space. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit, Shift and right click just to keep these two connections uh, the same. I'm going to go ahead here in the W, make it zero. We're going to duplicate this noise texture. We're going to get a mix color node and plug these two here. So now what we're going to do is loop the W. So now the scale is really small. So the W values are going to need to be pretty high for this to, to move, I mean, relatively fast. So what I'll do is we'll go make sure in your preferences, in the animation tab, your default interpolation is linear. And then what I'll do is here in the W, I'm going to hit I. Here in the factor, bring it to the left, hit I. I'm going to go to the end, bring that factor over, hit I. And then we're going to do a, uh, a scale of four. And then right here, now that we're at the very end, hit I. Go to the end and type in negative four because we did positive four on the other one. And we should see, let's see, is this real time? Yes. 14 frames a second. So we need to bring this density to like 10. There we go. So this is real time. So this is as fast as your particles are going to be moving um, once you're done rendering it. I think this is a really nice speed. Now for my final, I'm going to go ahead and save my file. And then for my final, I want my density to be 1200. So we have a lot of particles. The lighting will hit them. The thing about having lots of uh, thing about particle systems is if you have small particles, you need a large volume of them in order for the lighting to actually 
uh, hit it and look good and it feel nice, uh, much like making this whole particle system as a collective be one single solid object. So that is uh, sometimes why maybe you feel like your particle systems don't look good because you don't have enough particles. But now that we're finished, this is a final, I can actually say, okay, make it the full density. We can go ahead and render this out. So as for your render settings, I'm gonna go 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna do a uh, P and, I'm gonna tell it to do a PNG sequence and then I'll sequence that together. If you don't wanna do a PNG sequence and you just want Blender to give you MP4 out the box, which I don't encourage, but you totally can. Um, we can go here to a FF MPEG video, pick your file, encoding to mp4 or quicktime if you're on mac and then medium quality to perceptually lossless render render animation and when you're done you'll have something really cool like mine so there you go hope you guys enjoyed it again if you want to learn tons of more really cool things about particle systems and geometry nodes i have a whole series on my patreon you can check that out in the description but with that hope you learned something cool hope you can apply this to other things and i'll see you in the next one